Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the fourth grade concept of two-step multiplication and division problems. This is standard 4.4H in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 6 off the 2018 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So Fran is going to buy some shirts, four shirts that are $13 each. Then we also need to buy a pair of socks that's $4.29. So we simply need to find the total amount. So if I were to draw a picture, so let's pretend these are my shirts here. And so I've got four of them. So they're going to be $13 each. I'm just going to make them kind of look like T's, I guess doesn't really matter what they look like as long as you can kind of visualize what we have here. So we've got my four t-shirts here that are $13 each. And then we've got just a pair of socks. So I'm just going to kind of draw something that kind of looks like stockings. And there's going to be like two of them right there. So let's pretend those are socks. And those are not an even number. That's $4.29. So... If I wanted to add all of these up, I guess I could. So we'll look at it that way. Another way would be to go ahead and multiply. Because you see we've got four sets of 13 here. So it looks like we can do four sets of 13. And then we could add the 429. So that looks like one option. Or we can just add all four. So let's do both. Let's make sure we get the same answer because we're just looking for the total. So that's going to be, that's the unknown is our total. Now here's the tricky part with the 13s. And I'm pretty sure this is why this problem is written the way it is. Adding four 13s is obviously not that difficult. But what do we do with this 429? Because we know that we need to line up the decimals. But there are no decimals here in the 13. So this is what we need to know. When there is not a decimal, it always goes after the ones place. So this 13 is 13 decimals. Since we're dealing with money, let's go ahead and do that. Let's make this all $13. Now that 429 sits just perfectly. That's the trick is knowing that a decimal always goes after the ones place, to the right of the ones place. And if we add this up, obviously that's going to be 29 cents. So I see we've got two options there, F and G, so far. But with, there is a J not here, so we'll have to keep that in mind. And now we're looking at 3, 6, 10, 13, 16. Then I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 56.29 looks like G is going to work, but we also said that we could do 4 times 13 plus 4.29. So let's do that. Let's do 13 times 4. Let's go ahead and switch it around using the commutative property. You know what? Since I'm going to go ahead and add that 4.29, this is what I want to do. I want to go ahead and use partial products. So what that means is I'm just going to multiply the 4 times 3 and write the 12. And then this 4 times 1, but really remember that's 10. So 4 times 10 is 40. Either way, you should get your answer of 52. But what I want to do now is I want to add that 429. Since I'm going to add them up, might as well add up all three. And remember, I said, if you don't have a decimal, it always goes after the ones place. So we could go ahead and make 12.00, 40.00. You can always add zeros, as many as you need to, after a decimal, and it doesn't change it. So if we add all of this up, we're going to get 29. 4 and 2 is going to be 6. And then 1 and 4, and there we go, that's going to be 56. So either way you look at it, it is going to be 56.29. So that J is kind of confusing, simply because if you got something wrong, it's easy to think, oh, they must not have made it here. But typically, that's not going to be the answer. Your answer here is going to be G.